Hello, welcome to an all new Marvel cast, Explosion Network's hub of all things Marvel, a place to talk about everything MCU and beyond from Avengers and Defenders to Patrick O'Hara and Peter Parkcar. My name is Ashley Hobley, your friendly neighborhood podcast host, and joining me today is Josh and Dylan Blight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I know you said podcast host, but my brain heard podcast host. <laughs> Well, in one of the many mul- multiverses, the multiverses yeah. I'm a podcast toast. I hope to be podcast too. It just made me think of there you go. everything I always... Uh, Lord uh, Miller, if you're <laughs> listening, give us this the universe we're all toast. Uh, bit. On this episode of All, all the podcast, Daniels. All the Daniels, you know? Mm. Bread focused. Mm. You know? Um, yeah, on today, this episode, we're talking about Spider-Man across the Spider-Verse, of course, the latest entry in this, this, the Spider-Verse series of films by Sony Animation. Uh, very excited, of course, to talk about it. Uh, but yeah, please be aware, we'll be freely discussing anything and everything about the plot themes and ending of the movie. So if you watched it, go to the cinemas, watch it, and then come back. Yeah, Kieran crazy you know especially this first week i feel like there's going to be a bunch of stuff that's posted online like i've already seen clips i've already the, seen like spoilers all over Twitter. like clips from yeah. the movie they're like yeah like, how are they getting the it <laughs> yeah in such good it's quality always... it's <laughs> i don't know yeah bullshit uh all right with that said let's jump into our discussion of spider-man across the sky diverse what's up danger Want to get out of here? Oh, when? So wait a minute. There's an elite crew with all the best spider people in it? Uh, who's the new guy? This is unbelievable. This is the lobby. Miguel O'Hara. The whole thing was his idea. What's a guy got to do to join this spider team? You can never be part of this. Don't even get me started on Doctor Strange and the little nerd back on Earth 99999. Come on, go easy on the kid. He had a terrible teacher. Peter. Miles. Mayday. You have a baby? I have a baby. I'll take it from here. Miles, being Spider-Man is a sacrifice. You have a choice between saving one person and saving every world. Send me home. I can't do that. I can do both! Spider-Man always... Not always. What about Uncle Ben? If not for Uncle Ben, most of us wouldn't be here. Can't stop me now! You can't run forever, kid! I can't lose one more friend. Miguel, this isn't what we talked about! You knew? I had no idea what you're doing! Everyone keeps telling me how my story is supposed to go. Nah. I'm gonna do my own thing. All stations, stop Spider-Man. Directed by Joachim Dos Santos, Kent Powers, and Justin K. Thompson. Written by Phil Lord, Christopher Miller, and David Callahan. Based on Marvel Comics. Starring Shamik Moore, Haley Steinfeld, Brian Tyree Henry, Luna Lauren Velez, Jake Johnson, Jason Schwartzman, Issa Rae, Karen, Karan Sony. Uh, Daniel Kaluuya and Oscar Isaac after reuniting with Gwen Stacy Brooklyn's full time friendly neighborhood Spider-Man is catapulted across the multiverse where he encounters a team of spider people charged with protecting its very existence however when the heroes clash on how to handle a new threat Miles finds himself pitted against the other spiders he must soon redefine what it means to be a hero so he can save the people he loves most Uh, of course we all loved spider-man into the spider-verse from back in 2018 um i gave that film a 9.5 i also gave this movie a 9.5 in my review where you said uh across spider-verse is one of the best adaptations of comic books to date incredible achievement in the art form of animation and a clear love letter to the law and legacy of spider-man it feels like an epic comic book event series but crucially we're only at the halfway point so i will now be eagerly counting down the days until spider-man beyond the spider-verse hits cinemas uh, Dylan, what are your thoughts on Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse? I think it is a wonderful looking film. I think it's very imaginative. I really appreciate the like how 
Gwen's world is like painted with a different brush, I it's guess. Would be yes. the, yeah, watercolored. Uh, I do think some of the other locations could have maybe gone a little bit wilder, but that's fine. They all stand out different enough. Um, really appreciate that. I think the the amount of jokes and references, obviously, to other Spider-Man movies and stuff like that is um, makes it just like they, they take that Spider-Verse stuff to the next level. I think the standout one is the just having Donald Glover in there was the yeah like got got a pop for me. As so. a prowler, you know. Yeah, as a Fantas- prowler, yeah. It's so funny, especially this week when there's all these articles going around about uh live action Miles Morales movie being made and like people mm. going, Oh, you should have Donald Glover as Miles. It's like, no. You either right. cast him as a villain. You ca- he either gets cast as a hero or he lives long enough to be cast as a villain. Yeah. And that's literally what's happened. So uh, so that was really good. Um, soundtrack is killer, and oh, the original soundtrack's killer. The the licensed film songs. The licensed songs are fine. I I generally think the 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 original score though by um Daniel Pemberton. The, yeah, who we love. Obviously, I loved his King Arthur soundtrack. Um, the Guy Ritchie stuff. So a bunch of other stuff he's done is really good too. But all. Like all that was phenomenal. Um, the voice work again stand out. The one part I walked away though feeling was just very confused about, and I'm ready to hear your pitch, I guess, <laughs> <laughs> to why it stands up. And I mean, in a world where this is currently sitting on IMDb, like 19 or 20 top 250 movies currently, some ridiculous number. Um, it's like the highest rated movie on Letterbox or something. People are just going off their face this movie as far as i'm concerned doesn't stand anywhere near to the first one when it just comes to the story and i can see the argument being well doing it's a two-parter that's fine that's fine my example that i'm always going to bring up is empire strikes back if you want to consider that a two-parter into return the jedi because that movie ends with a cliffhanger right Cliffhanger clearly sets mm-hmm. up, doesn't say to be continued, but it's a two part story, right? We go to Return of the Jedi, that's the second part. New Hope's just a movie. It's a, it's a one and done. They didn't know they was making four. They make Empire. It's basically two parts. You still get so much character moments, so much build. Characters come so far in, in a movie like that. My biggest problem with this movie is I feel like the, the majority of the characters, it's just a bunch of setup. And now it sets up a lot of really interesting characters. Totally give it that. I like the the spot or whatever that fucking character villain is. Yes. Dumb as fuck. However, <laughs> I <laughs> uh, by the end, I was like, you know what? I was laughing at you at first, but now you're kind of scary. Um, Spider-Man 2099. Oscar Isaac. So- Spider-Man. Very interesting dude. Makes me go, okay, like, is he just on the wrong path? Is he actually a villain? I personally not viewing him as a villain. I'm sort of viewing him on someone down the wrong path currently. So there's lots of really interesting things there. Gwen gets so much more time in this. Um, I absolutely love her. I would just take a whole movie with, with just Gwen. She is the character who gets the most uh, work, character moments, like actual development in this film. But when you compare that to the when you compare this movie to the first one, and you think about the standout moment from that first film that just had everyone on edge and the moment that most people in the cinema sat down and went like, I'm sure most people have been enjoying it up to this point, but this was the moment everyone went down. This may be something special. It's him jumping off that building. Yep. It's miles leaping backwards. The song, the beautiful angle, the cinematography of it all. Like that's a moment, not only as a picture that you can see uh, a, a post on Twitter and you just go, well, that's a beautiful, that's some beautiful animation there, but your brain connects that to such a, um, emotional moment for that character and a choice he made to overcome his fears and everything like that. There's nothing that touches that with a 10 foot fucking shovel in this film. And I'm not trying to say this movie's bad. I think this is a very, very enjoyable movie. I think if I had reviewed it, I probably would have given it like an eight solid eight, beautiful looking, beautiful sounding, very keen for part two, just a lot of setup. Your go. My go- <laughs> um, I would agree. I think the first one is a better complete project. Like, um, I've I've said several times that I wish I'd given it a ten when I reviewed it back in. You probably should have. I probably should have. 
I fucked up. Um, <laughs> but I think this project is so artistically superior to that film that that's why I think it's pretty close. Um, I think it's just people's people's being minds being blown by what can be accomplished in animation. Um, kids movies. Yeah, kids movies. Like, like in my review, I specifically mentioned <laughs> Gamora de Toro talking about this start of the year. <laughs> animation is cinema. You know, so um yeah, I just think like it looked every single frame looks absolutely incredible and could easily be put on the wall, even when it's just, you know, Gwen Stacy's dad just kind of looking off in the distance, kind of a forlorn figure, um, when she goes back to visit him again. Um st- having seen this movie for a second time today. Oh, wow. Um Yeah, the story is very simplistic, the plot overall. Um and there is a lot of setup, uh, but you know it definitely was set up as a two-part project. Yeah. So which is fine, which is fine, that. and it's very interesting. In the this is kind of the year of part ones, uh, so yeah. it's going to be interesting. Fast to and see. Furious, Mission Impossible, Spider-Man yes. Across the Spider-Verse, Barbie, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> Barbie will return. Uh, uh, yeah, Oppenheimer. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, June. I mean, that's yeah. If you watch the first yeah. part, like, before yeah. you go to the cinema. um, so yeah, I think I think it ends on like a crazy cliffhanger, and like, again, it like I said, it feels like the first half of like an, an event comic series. It's like mm. it's this halfway point. You're like, holy shit, cliffhanger, end of comic reveal, um, but you get all this crazy, amazing stuff in the middle. Obviously, you get miles in the spider society and you know you get that whole sequence in mumbai hatton mumbai hatton i want to say mumbai hatton, okay. i don't think they ever say what it is don't think um they mean, no. this also is so funny there is like so many fantastic jokes littered throughout the entire film um but then it also has a lot of heartfelt emotional moments um i think my major critique other than the story was it does uh, the pacing is a little bit off um Especially when a lot of the advertising is, hey, check out all these Spider-Men. Look forward to going, seeing Miles interact with all these different Spider-People. And then maybe the first 30, 40 minutes is Miles in New York or, you know, not interacting with anybody. I mean, how um, much in the movie, like if I was going, like you've said it twice now, but like how much is Gwen at the start? Oh, there's, I think there's like a full like 10, 15 minute prologue. Very long. Yeah. To the not extent where... But- yeah. No, I would argue maybe that is the best segment. <laughs> or like I would agree. Like, <laughs> you put the, I would not be surprised in the next three weeks if they put that whole segment out as like a advertisement thing to go see the movie. Um even though I they mean, don't really do because the best is, parts is of the movie a to fantastic me. short film, yeah. also a really good recap of the events of the previous film, yeah. um, but retold in a new creative way. Yeah, it's fantastic. Her, the, the, but that's the best emotional work this movie does is that 15, 20 minutes at the start, then her coming back right at the end and hugging her dad. Yeah. That's the most development a character has in this whole movie. Yeah, I guess because... You know, <laughs> I, I mean, Miles is still like halfway through his emotional journey. It's like he would have had that moment. But he ended up at the wrong end of it. <laughs> well, I'd, yeah, I feel like Miles' journey is obviously... I'd, I, I'd be annoyed if they do a cop-out. I feel like surely his journey has to be to to let go, right? I don't know what the... I don't know if we're going to what do you mean by let go? Or, well, like... Like... I don't know. Like, if he... if he def- Like, say he defeats himself, he defeats his... The Prowler, like, <clears throat> alternate universe self or whatever. At the start of the next one, he goes... And then by the end of the movie, he goes back and mentions... If he saves his dad, I don't... Like, what's the... I, I don't know. You know? What's up? What? But sure. it, it was... Then he's also being put in this crazy position where it's either you save your dad or you let your dad die. So which... Which is the worst of the two? <laughs> I feel like he like the movie set it up to say that he has to let him die, though, right? No, he can. You said I can do both. <laughs> I guess, but I don't know. We don't know who this Spider Man twenty nine really is. 
Yeah. I do. It's Oscar Isaac. That's true. It's kind of crazy. Obviously, again, bringing it up to that awesome like prelude segment, uh, you get a look at Spider Man twenty nine nine. It looks like he's a vampire. It's kind of never really addressed again, other than he in- injects himself with like a venom sort of thing later in the film. So that's kind of as a, I said, a lot someone of who doesn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Also, that vulture at the start of the film, man. Dude. That whole segment, it's fantastic. That's some insane animation because it was doing my. It was actually. I know people talked about the first one with the the frames, but doing their head in a little bit. Yeah. That segment was actually sort of fucking with my head a bit. Having them, those characters like Gwen running at whatever they're running at, twenty four, I think, and then he, that bird, the just didn't. I swear it was moving at like fucking like ten frames. <laughs> Like, it's, I, I guarantee in some, when they do some behind the scenes, they, they're going to explain whatever happened there. And it's just, it was it was hurting my brain a bit. I, my, I could tell my brain was struggling a little bit. Like, I, fe- I was yeah, feeling it was strained. definitely not <laughs> moving yeah. in sync with everything else. Yeah. And also, uh, I feel like a lot of the animation was a lot more, like, smaller. Like, you know, it wasn't like big movements. It was like tiny little changes every yeah. couple of frames. It was like stop motion in real time or some weird shit i don't know yeah it's like they did stop motion of just sketch drawings instead of yes actually animating yeah sk- the thing yeah he's like a flipbook character kind of because yeah. obviously he's based on leonardo, Ca- yeah. <laughs> leonardo da vinci's workbooks and that kind of stuff um very cool design which i don't think i've seen anywhere before i don't i, I assume there's a lot of stuff in this that's just straight up original there cannot be this many Spider-Man alternate universes in the comic books. I don't. I don't believe. Probably. I, I think a lot of them are different suits and that kind of stuff as well, because mm. a lot of them don't have to say anything. So, um, what what were the most surprising moments for you in the going into the film? That opening, just yes. so much Gwen. That was a huge surprise. Um. Seeing Donald Glover, I, that was actually a, a legit fun surprise. I appreciated that. Uh, I think that's about it. I mean, honestly, I don't know if this is going to sound pretentious, but him coming into a universe where there's an alternate bad version of himself, I think I was already prepared for that to be a... That's that's okay. a, that's that's pretty... that's. I don't want to say 101, but that's 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 like a common. No, I mean it's a pretty common reality. Thing. Yeah, it's yes. a pretty multi, pretty common multiverse thing. Multiverse thing. Yeah. Um, it did surprise me the first time, but then when I watch back, it's like you, like the clue is they like specifically say Earth 42 is going to, and we already yes. know that that's not his. Earth, oh, they so. they 100 percent got me right. The way that scene, oh, okay. the way that they got that, you, they got me. But was I shocked that like that was a thing that there was an alternate? They could do, yeah. Yeah, that part didn't shock me. But they got me with the way that's that last twenty minutes or whatever is edited between mm. him and Gwen and all that sort of stuff. I didn't realize they were in because they kept flashing her on the outside of the building. Obviously, it looks like she's listening to him have this conversation and all this sort of stuff. I think they've done that well. I think um, they, yeah, they, they do it well because also the lighting is different for mm. the the different universes. Mm. Like he goes into the building, it's like green lit, and she goes into it and it's like completely dark. Yeah. Um and then even her, the room looks different from when you'd left the room uh, earlier in the film. So, yeah. yeah. But that I think that was such a good payoff. Um, and then, you know, obviously the obviously revealed the Miles Prowler, which is quite an interesting setup for another film. Um, mm. Different voice actor, too. Is it? Or is he putting on a, another voice? No, different voice actor. Do we know who? Yeah, it's the guy. I can't remember his name, but if you look it up, he was in that series. I liked. Um, uh, and there is it down. Fuck. Uh, the one. Fuck Netflix one about the kids who are wrongly accused. Um, uh, fuck. Hold on. What's it called? Directed by the face. I come on. Jarrell Jerome is the actor's okay. actor's name. He was in the series okay. when they see us. Uh, okay. One. Where did I pull that one from? Oh. Credited um, as Miles G. Morales. Uh, there you go. Add an initial. Changes everything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the little Lego. Well, they go into for yeah, a second. Very funny. Yeah. very funny gag. Um, also, like every time you hear 
uh, it's actually J.K. Simmons every time you hear J.J. and the Jameson ring. Hmm. He's the same in every single universe, which yep. you know I approve of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the one constant across the multiverse. Um, the I did pop at Peter parked Kara. Yeah, that's which cool. is I love like all the little like editor notes over yeah. the film. Those are fantastic. Um, there were a lot at the start, but then they kind of dropped off later on in the the film. Um, I mean, yeah, the first time you, we go into live action with Mrs. Chen from the Venom series, mm. um, it's like, oh, couldn't you afford anybody else bigger, I guess? But um, <laughs> that was cool. Um, That's such a... I wonder how many people are going to not get that. Not realize, it's like, wow, this is a random live action yeah. segment. Yeah. I mean, Venom is reasonably popular. Yeah, I guess that's true. So. Do you, um, uh, uh, do you think it's weird? Or I just, I guess it makes sense, but obviously the Spider-Man they chose is to show is um, Andrew Garfield. They don't show Tom Holland. They show Tobey Maguire. I, I don't think Tobey they do Maguire Tom Holland, second. though. Yeah, they don't show any Tom Holland. Yeah. But we never see his Uncle Ben die, so and we never mm. see a Gwen Stacy. Oh, Captain Stacy in the universe dies, so. True, I guess. And that's why, you know. I mean, they give a shout out to him with the, the Spider-Man and Doctor Strange on Earth 2000, nine nine yeah. nine 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 or whatever, yeah. But yeah, I think that's the reason that we don't see that live action iterations of him. So, yeah, um, yeah, um, up to the spot, incredible introduction, the opening fight, hilarious, yeah. um, and him ultimately being defeated, sort of by kicking his own butt, hilarious. Yeah. The whole time that fight's going on, I'm like, why are we spending so long with a like just an intro villain, like? A, you know a, I mean? a villain like, of the week? Yeah. <laughs> Legit. That's what I was thinking. So, And then by the yeah. end, you're like, oh, shit. Yeah. I was like, all right, got me. And I love, love the fact that he's the guy who gets hit by the bagel. And the yeah. And did you see bagel. people actually, I saw people post on Twitter that, yes, that is, a, that's a thing that happens. I did not remember. I've watched that movie for a while. But yeah. I saw someone post on Twitter the scene where that happens and like edit it together. They're like, he froze the bur- bur- bread behind it, hits a dude, and, like fades out, like epic music plays it, just like, you know, like villain music plays it that cuts to the him. Like, it's, <laughs> like... <laughs> uh, but yeah, so such a cool design. Like, <laughs> just him. Unfortunately for both of us, it's flesh. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, Jason Swartman, what a perfect piece of casting that is, I think. Um, yeah, what do you have any favorite of the new Spider-Man introduced? Um, I would actually say uh, Mumba Hatton, Mumba Hatton, Spider-Man, Spider-Man India, Spider-Man India. Um, really, I can't remember the actor's name, but that dude's funny, right? From Karen Deadpool, Sony. or Karan Sony. Yeah, yeah. From Deadpool. very funny, very um, just the delivery on a bunch of the lines in his. Spider-Man introduction, like saying what he does, wake up, perfect hair, put a bit of water, you know, like all that sort of stuff. Like very funny. I quite enjoyed that. Yeah. The whole, uh, chai tea bit. Yeah. So, so chai tea, chai is tea. <laughs> <laughs> Which is obviously funny in context that Miles is complaining about ATM machines earlier in yes, the film. Early in the movie. Why do they say ATM machines? M is machine. Like, <laughs> Yeah. I love the whole, uh, what was it? Let me let me show you around. Here's the traffic. Here's some more yeah. traffic. Here's, Here's the so traffic. Yeah. Here's where the British saw that shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, he's fantastic. Um, I really loved Hobby Spider Spider Punk. Incredibly animated. Like obviously doing all that very anarchistic anarchist uh, mm. punk esque animation of like the. The, the paper and all that kind of stuff and like him being very he's like a, he's like a cutout he's yeah definitely, yeah it's insane apparently that his animation took like two to three years to do yeah um but him being this like chaotic force in this whole thing i'm very interested to see where his character goes from here because obviously you know he kind of threw gwen the the multiverse thingy at the well, end she's in, she he's joined back on with her you know, he's her group at the end, so. Is? Yeah, he was Yeah, there, right? he was part of the group, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, you've seen the movie twice, I was saying, once, yeah, come on. Yeah, like, 
Yeah. I was more focused on the other side characters, you know. We finally get we get Spider Ham and Cap. Uh, Spider Man. All the other ones are back. Noir and anime like robot Spider-Man, lady. Whatever. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Nero back. That's yeah. exciting. So we're going to get Nick Cage in the next movie. Critical. Yeah. Behind that. Um. Also, like, just the Spider small... Baby also would be my runner up. Mayday, yeah. Mayday, just, that's uh... my runner up. Yeah. Oh man, just Peter B. Parker. I think his fan. Jake Johnson, not a lot to do, uh, but made the most of it. Very memorable. Lots of mm. funny jokes and obviously playing against uh, Oscar Isaac's like Spider-Man. is th- described as a Spider-Man without a sense of humor. And that's probably yeah. very true. Very <laughs> like right, yep. um, super serious the entire time. Um, yeah, just uh, <laughs> all that. Very funny. Um, but yeah, I even I really love the Miles. Um, and Rio relationship um, that we get to see in this film, because obviously the, the first movie was so focused on his dad, his dad and uncle Aaron. And like this one, she's like a fully developed character, whether that's also on the back of the Miles Morales game, where she's the sole parent, it becomes such a important character in that. Um, just seeing that the, the relationship between the two in this film and like, even the <laughs> joking about uh, he's got that, he's got a beat in Spanish. Oh, you're dead. You're a dead mm. kid. <laughs> it's mm. like, um that's just so much fun just the heartfelt speech she gives under the the water tower or whatever at the end like yeah so beautiful um yeah and then obviously the big climactic moment of the mo- movie is this massive chase sequence uh with all these spider-men chasing him uh, and that's filled with like hilarious jokes and callbacks like the the spider-man that's like kind of holding the two uh th- practicing t- practicing the thing oh, the towel oh, the holding together, two webs know? like the yeah. the train sort of thing yeah and then everybody kind of running over the top of him hilarious um we also get spider dinosaur at one point like freaking yep. crazy uh absolutely also, shout out to yuri lomfall <laughs> yeah so they, they make the joke this is a video game bad this is a video game guy another video game guy yeah also i don't know if you noticed you know genki when he keeps going through the the dorm room he's playing spider-man 2 on yes, the, I did notice that. Yes. Yeah. So many small details. I can't... I'm so looking forward to, like, going through and can freeze frame different things. I'm pretty sure the card game, they're, they're like, some of the kids are playing Yu-Gi-Oh! Like, on, on the roof. And, like, you see a card, and it's got that exact color design as the Yu-Gi-Oh! cards. That'd be funny. That, so, yeah. Um, But, yeah, obviously, we're kind of left on an interesting cliffhanger where Miles is in a different universe... Uh, Gwen's got a team. Spider Man twenty nine and nine's got a team, Who's got a team uh, including man? Ben Riley, who was this like uh, maligned Spider Man clone, um, who's kind of been devolved into an angsty Spider Man. I just, which I just I've seen know, people we, get kind of upset about. <laughs> we haven't talked about the one big thing from this movie, actually. Okay, which is the fact that this. They set it up to say this whole, like, no, Miles, like, oh, I can't bring him to the team because, like, they play it out as if he caused the big thing and it was actually the event of the last movie. But it turns out to be the fact that he was bitten by the spider from um, Earth-42. And yes. that's actually the first um, ripple effect. The in- first anomaly. First anomaly, yeah. I thought that, that was a cool, cool... That's a cool thing. Yeah. Hilarious. Around with the current discussion around Miles Morales going on on discourse online, um, where everybody's saying he's not Spider Man, and it's like this movie's going, yeah, he was not meant to be Spider Man. <laughs> you're not really Spider Man, <laughs> you know. Yeah. The bad guy kind of is saying that, and you're like, oh well. You know, if the bad guy's making that argument, what does that make us? <laughs> yeah, but I, I did think that was a good, like. Making that the anomaly and the way they build up to that revealing that information. Because the whole time you think, you assume it's just the fact that everything that happened in the first movie. And he just that, blames him for that. Yeah. Blames him for that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was like, and just the way it's delivered and obviously, you know, obviously leading up to Miles jumping off that train. <laughs> Fucking yeah. crazy. It's very cool. Yeah. Don't know where that train was going, but yeah. I don't up, know that up, that whole up, world up. was weird. <laughs> the moon? I don't know. You know, maybe they got know. like a space base or something maybe, up yeah. the top. I don't know. But uh, yeah, and all the banter with uh, 
Peter B being like, oh, I'm a great, yeah, I'm a pretty good mentor. You know, yeah. he could pull that off. Yeah. Also, I really enjoyed Issa Rae's Jessica Drew, like powerful, pregnant black lady. Yeah. Although I've seen some people get upset. That's like, why are you putting a black woman, why are you putting a pregnant woman in danger? And it's like, mm. fair point. People had the same, people had the same fucking problem <coughs> with Wolfenstein too. Do you remember this drama? No. There was like a, there was a strong black woman in that who had a baby and she was like shooting guns around the baby, fighting Nazis. I'm like, why do you have to like, why do you have to do this? It's like, oh, it's fucking the Nazis. The Nazis, <laughs> man. Like you gotta shoot them. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So, what are your expectations for Beyond the Spider Verse? I mean, high, because the thing is, this movie, I, I'm I'm coming off this one not, not as high as you. So, my expectations for the for part two is okay. Well, if this movie was all set up well and well and good enough, but my expectations coming to the second one are so much more high now because I need you to pay all this shit off. I'm, mm. I'm expecting some really what, good payoff. What do you need things. paid off? I just think every every setup to be emotionally good or at least acceptable. <laughs> like the introduction of all these characters, the the like what's the what's gonna be the story for twenty nine nine Spider Man? Is he just gonna disappear? Like can I have can I have a, a resolution? Can I have some more backstory to him? I feel like I need it. Um like Miles versus Miles. Am I just gonna get more from that than just he's evil Miles because reasons you know like I, there's just so many characters in just this, in this movie i just don't want them all to be that sounds like cool let's just do it without any like interesting story for it yeah i think um you know i just need uh gwen and miles to be okay by the end of the movie you know everybody else can die but as long as they're okay <laughs> um yeah i will say also, I think one of my favorite scenes is just them walking around that the bank building. And like, there's that shot that I've seen already online as well, but like my, uh, Gwen, like walking underneath like a perch and like mm. every, then the whole entire world goes underneath uh, upside down. It's like, fuck, that's so cool. <laughs> that was probably one Even just like the long shots of them, like sitting upside down on that building and of the city. I was like, man, got to get it put that up on my wall or something. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Any other moments you're like, man, that, that was like the coolest single frame. I need to, I would love a screenshot of that. No, I mean, you probably just called out what I'd say was the best one, which was the, the wide angle shot of them sitting under that tower. Um, that was probably the best one shot I could think of from the movie, but there's so many, obviously if I was to go for it, there's so many moments you could easily, screenshot and hang on a wall it's just it's a movie filled with them so yeah it's hard to call specifics all right all right let us know what you thought of spider-man across the spider-verse um by going to explosion.com slash twitter or jump to discord at explosion.com slash discord if you want to help us out here at all new marvel cast leave us a review on apple Podcasts or on podcast i tell people about the show leave us five stars anyone can leave five stars um and if you enjoyed this episode, Thoughts with Dollar, head on over to our coach page at explosion.com slash supports. Uh, so the next time we'll be joining you is for Secret Invasion, uh, which is such a episode one coming June 21st. So be sure to watch the premiere of that and join us next time for another all new Marvel cast. Okay.